Venus. I'm back from Asia. It has just been about a week and I am trying to get my size back because unfortunately keto worked just too well. I went into hyper in intermittent fasted mode and started to just burn fat and probably a little bit of muscle because I wasn't pumping enough or getting enough, get my little handstands in. But I digress, so bam, this is the business. This is five years and counting in ketosis at the age of 47, going on 48, so I'm stoked. But today, let's get right on to it. I'm gonna talk about some principles on how to keto adapt or what's not making you keto adapt. Now, a lot of people are complaining about the way you title stuff, but I'm pretty much going on rants. So I'm just kind of throwing like the kitchen sink and some bots and some pans in the videos and voila, there it is. Okay, so what's the deal? A lot of people are having a hard time keto adapting and they have no idea. They got their macros perfect, they think. Um, but I really realize that people are not willing to kind of let go of any uh, food porn or self-indulgence. Uh, also, sleep is a big reason uh, why people are not keto adapting. People think, thinking that they are hitting those five levels of sleep and they are not. They might be hovering around two or three where it seems as though you are asleep, but you are not in a deep, rested, reparative mode of sleep. So you can go the whole night and you're not sleeping. So these concepts are of, well, how to keto adapt. Well, of course, if I tell you what is wrong, then you just kind of think the opposite and that's right. So that means you've got to go to five levels of sleep to hit REM a couple of times during the night. That's 90 minute cycles of one, two, three, four, five. So when you wake up, you feel rested. You might use wake up to use the bathroom to pee and that's how you know that you are producing ketones. So, what's the deal? Uh, what else? So, we know that hitting five levels of sleep a couple times during the night, three, four, five times, is going to be reparative and ketone making. What else? Well, we have things like getting your macros right. Stop trying to get in walnuts. No. Almonds. No. Even too many macadamia nuts with the omega-6 and the freaking phytic acid might be a problem if you overindulge. And that's the problem with us today. We cannot overindulge. Now, people come to my channel and some people get it and the ones who don't, as I've been saying, keep on rolling because I've got information to share and it works because I've been teaching. I've been coaching a lot of people and I know it works and I know it does not work. And I know it works on me and I know it doesn't work. So a lot of people out there are like, I'm in ketosis, and I can drink coffee. No, you're not. You're guessing that you're in ketosis. But I'm able to build muscle and get shredded on the drop of a dime and have tons of energy at almost 50. So a lot of you people who think that you're in ketosis, and this is, by the way, this is epigenetics. This is not my genetics. In fact, I've had to do a lot of damage control for freaking fluoride in the water and xenoestrogens and phytoestrogens, chemicals, and not getting enough rest. And of course, blood sugar dysregulation, semi-hypoglycemic when I was younger. But let's get right on to it. So I've mentioned things like sleep and I've mentioned things like your macros and not going too high in protein because Time after time after time, I work with people who use a glucometer, not a breathalyzer, and not urine strips, but a glucometer. And the glucometer is telling me that when you go this much too high on protein, you don't keto adapt. And you have constant insulinogenic effect, glucose spikes, preventing you from keto adapting. Now, yes, you can have high ketones and high glucose. That's not highly keto adapted because the body has to compete with two fuel sources. Oh my God, what do I, it's going to go for the glucose and that's going to keep your car burner and that's going to keep your blood sugar dysregulations going. Now let's get on right up to it. 
because I think I need to do a video series about why some of the reasons that you are not keto adapting, how to fix that. So of course, eat the right, right amount of protein. But another thing that you guys want to consider is da 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 your liver and your kidney function. Yes, and your gallbladder. So a lot of you people are walking around with junked up gallbladders and you don't even know it. Well, your liver makes bile and your gallbladder houses the bile, salts. And that works as like a detergent to separate and scrub down the fats so you can digest them so they can go into the body. But a lot of you people have sluggish gallbladders because you don't sleep enough, enough. you drink alcohol and you've been eating crap carbs your entire life. Not good. Hi guys. Cause you know, if I'm really gonna be sarcastic the whole time, I'm gonna be really kind of like crotchy. Well, not crotchy, it's cranky. And I gotta keep it light sometimes. Cause that's really, I got like two sides of me, like really people, and then the, the other side that are like, you know, having fun with this whole thing, this whole keto. It's not really keto, you guys. It's just really about being more healthy. That's it. So if trying to get into ketosis to lose weight is a motivating factor to eat healthy and to fix your shite, let's do it. All right, here we go. Your liver, your gallbladder, and your kidneys are not functioning. Men, men, listen. You are developing issues with your testosterone. And that's what makes you a man. And that's having healthy levels of testosterone is an in indicative of your total health. So you guys start getting older, you hit like 36, and all of a sudden, and it even happens to young bucks in their 20s where it's like, eh, xenoestrogens, chemical messengers that mimic estrogen, that dock on your, your estrogen receptor site. And so now your body has the inability to clear out estrogen because xenoestrogens are blocking that ability and they're raising your estrogen levels. And guys, you get to your 40s and 50s, and you have more estrogen than a freaking woman. And you know why? Because women have the ability to clear out estrogen, because we are estrogen machines. You guys don't have the ability to clear out all those, you know, estrogens that are docking onto your receptor sites. And so your testosterone goes down the toilet, and you get real flat, and you have a hard time building muscle. That's why. So you need sulfur rich foods. You need cruciferous vegetables. They're gonna go into your liver and pull out that junked up estrogen that's clogging your liver fun function and making your kidneys overwork and to be able to eliminate them and detox them from your body. Now I don't mean going on these crazy detoxes. I mean change your nutrition because blood sugar dysregulation creates advanced glycation end product, which makes the function of your cells not be able to do what it wants the right way. And that means your, over, your adrenals are overtaxed, which are connected to all your steroid hormones, your reproductive hormones. So now you've got inflammation, and now your testosterone, or women, you become estrogen dominant, men too. But women, we really see it in our hips and thighs. That's also a sign of a junked up liver. Now the liver, it's great. With just 25% less, it can regenerate. So the great thing about the liver is that we can unjunkify it. But if you can't change your life, you cannot unjunkify your liver. And that makes your kidneys overwork. And how do you see this? Skin tags, moles. You can't absorb vitamin D. You have rashes, eczema. Because your liver is a detoxification and it is representing what's on your skin. You guys think that you're healthy? We're not. Me, you, and everyone has to go and fix and heal the body. And it's not always about ketogenesis. It's just about freaking not feeling tired anymore and going through the blood sugar dysregulation and being insulin resistant and not even knowing it. So that's it, you guys. I'm so stoked. I just really want to do more videos about why you've got to do whatever it takes, like get rid of the cheese, because it has casein. Dairy is a big reason why. Oh, the eczema? 
hello, the nightshade foods, potatoes, and um, and uh, red pepper or green, the pepper found the paprika and tomatoes. Get rid of them. That could be a reason why you're having issues with your thyroid. The oxalates. Cook it. Cook your food. It's not always good to eat raw food because of the plant chemicals. Because plants don't have teeth. So they have plant chemicals. And we are not used to eating plants constantly all the time. Our bodies have a difficult time to be able to process the plant chemicals. So that's why. And the nuts with the phytic acid. And the casein and the, the milk proteins that are very, very disastrous for people who are depressed, mood disorder, ADD, ADHD, children with autism. Hello! Grass-fed butter has a lot less of those milk proteins and more fat. That is the reason why you hear me say butter okay. The, 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 the cream, the reason why I say no to, fatty, to the whipping cream is because people aren't getting grass-fed. And they're getting things with carrageenans in them, the thickener that could be cancerous. That's why. There is rhyme to my reason. And stop with the food porn addiction. Because that's how you get into ketosis. Once you become like training with, with trying to get to the ketogenic diet, um, or not into it, but to use a ketogenic diet to get to ketosis, to get the business, right? To get the business is because it really is a motivation. It, <laughs> A motiv motivational concept to just get more healthy because you cannot keto adapt unless you are healthy. You can create ketones, you can feel a little bit better, but to reap the weight loss benefits, the fat loss, you got to get highly adapted and you have to eat a lot of fat to become highly adapted. And then you've got to be adapted for a while. And then once you're adapted for a while, then you can drop your fat by intermittent fasting. And that is the only way to get the business. Oh, and to work out, because you're not going to sit on your butt and get lipped it, ripped and lean on keto. You can fix your systems, but you need to move and you need to get your lymphatic system and your nervous system awake and going. And that's it, you guys. I'm back in the U.S. Back in the U.S. And I got energy, 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 energy. Peace out. Want to learn more? Go to stephaniepersson.com, Stephanie Business Person on my Facebook fan page, or Stephanie Ketogenic. I'm going to Instagram me, and uh, I'm feeling good at almost 50. Yeah, yeah. With knee injury, no cardio at all. Peace out. Yeah, yeah.